week. Hey, Sonia Williams, what's up? Thank you for joining the Uniweb interview show. I'm so happy you decided to join me. My name is Matthew Whiteside, author, interviewer, extraordinaire. <laughs> Good to meet you. What's going on, girl? Just chilling at home, getting ready to go to work in a couple of hours. Oh, nice. Yeah. A real job, huh? Yep. <laughs> That's, that sounds fun. So you, but you write right now in your spare time, correct? That is correct. And tell me, Sonia, what are you writing? Well, I am currently editing my science fiction, psychological thriller, fantasy-esque novel called Two-Way Mirrors. Two-Way Mirrors. So what is this story? I, I'm looking at the artwork that you have, and you painted this this artwork on your Twitter page, which is, looks fantastic. What is this? Not finished big, yet. <laughs> not, not finished, right. Yeah, it's a work in progress. Yes. Right. Um, so in Two-Way Mirrors, just to give people some context, I reached out to you via uh, WordPress like maybe three months ago because I read a synopsis of what your book is about and it freaked me out because I was writing something similar and I was like, no, <laughs> because I, <laughs> I thought it was such a unique idea. And, um, but it, it was really, it was really cool. So it's like different perspective, right? It's like looking deeper, deeper within type of perspective. Right. Yeah. Um, it's, Kind of like yours, dual world, reality, waking world, dream world. Mm. Um, and it goes deeper because the heroine in this book is discovering this world. And, you know, her connection to the other side, to her other self. And it's a connection process that goes on throughout the entire book and yeah it just becomes more and more clear as the book progresses how this alternate reality works okay and are you writing it like uh different perspectives are you writing like a first person third person kind of deal or is it all it's, in a... it's from it's from sarah's perspective so well it's a uh, third, third person, person. It changes perspectives, I guess. Right. So we'll be inside the main character's head. Okay. Then the narrator will describe what's happening, but we can't see inside anyone else's head. We can only see inside Sarah's head. So it's third person close or whatever. I think that's third what it's called. Third person close. Right? Yes, that's it. That's what I was looking for. Yeah. I, I think I that's know. right. I have word retrieval issues. <laughs> yeah. Third person closed. Yeah. Yeah. Most people call those or brain limited. farts. Third person limited. Limited. Yeah. That's it. There that's you go. The one. That's the one. You did it. <laughs> Nailed it. So how do you come to a, how do you come to find or come up with a story idea like this? Where did it come from? Who knows? Um, <laughs> it's, <laughs> An amalgamation of all the That's things. A great word, by the way. Thanks. <laughs> um, just all the things that I have watched and read and seen, and you know, it just sort of occurred to me. I don't remember the exact day or what I was doing when the idea hit me, but it just sort of hit me. Okay. It just started kind of flowing and I was I'd be sitting somewhere I'd be sitting in like a restaurant and then an idea would come and I would grab a napkin and write it down so I wouldn't forget and then I would type it into the story and then it would connect with another part of the story and yeah so this was this was like multiple pieces of the puzzle sent to you at multiple different times it wasn't like I want to write a story about this and then you kind of work from there or I knew that I wanted to write a story. Um, I think at the time that I started, I had just left 
a really stressful job that I really did not like that was just weighing me down. Um, and I started, a, I became self-employed. Um, I was a traveling mental health therapist going house to house and I would travel all over the place. I would drive really like 30 minutes from one house to another and I would have all this time in between. Yeah. And you know, I've always written things, but I never thought that I would write a book. And then around that time, this actually, um, I read a book that was really popular at the time. I don't want to say the name of it, but it was really, really terrible, terribly written. And yeah. a lot of people agreed that the writing in this book was awful, even though it became very, very popular. And I read that, I started reading that book and I was like, I want to know what the book is. <laughs> Who, what's it about? Just give me some hints. I can't say I guess, it. Man. I feel like I would be putting this author on blast if I did. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay. it's a pop. They don't care. It's a really successful book. Why, why do they care? <laughs> remember, you you know the book Fifty Shades? Yeah. Yeah. That it's was, that was like, the book you were reading? Yeah, that was a pretty... That was one of the worst, like, poorly written books I've ever read. Yeah. yeah. You know what? <laughs> you, you haven't read my book, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Hold off judgment before. But I, I know exactly what you mean. But it's it's the subject matter and the theme behind it and the ideas that it presented more so than it. Because I've heard the same thing about, like, the Da Vinci Code was yeah. terribly written. But people love it. Like the and there are people who say that the guy who writes the Da Vinci Code, the, his writing style is garbage. But like he gets his point across and what he, the feeling of what he's doing is not technically sound. But you know, you sell millions of copies. Who gives a crap, right? <laughs> whatever reason, for whatever reason, when I started reading that book, I was like, I've I've always written mostly poetry and short stories. I was like, I could write a book. If she can write a book, I could write a book. I could write a book. I have ideas, and then I just started, and it didn't pan out. And then I started again, and then I guess the idea just kind of came to me, and then I just kept going with it and going with it and going with it. That's so cool. So that's kind of how it happened. It's funny where we we draw inspiration from, right? It's like just getting the the urge to be like, oh, I can do that. It's it's as simple as that, and then actually putting an action behind it. Yeah. That's I don't think that was the inspiration. I think that was the motivation for motivation. actually writing the book. But the inspiration was, like I said, I mean, I've always been a huge fan of sci-fi and psychological thrillers. I like a movie geek, like just watching things like Inception and The Matrix and bunch of strange Great. movies like in waking life which is about dream yeah. world, waking world all that kind of stuff cool movie. movie it's crazy yeah really crazy. It was, the way it was done too very um like everything's drawn out and like watercolors and stuff and yeah yeah that was a cool movie i like that movie um maybe that's why we had the same similar <laughs> why we've written similar books yeah <laughs> that hang movie no. that's funny it is funny. It's a because I don't know a lot of people who've seen that movie. It's it was a Pretty scary, yeah. It's a trippy. It's a trippy trip. Um, so you're writing this. You also do your um. Oh, that's what I was gonna say. The publish. So you're getting this actually. You're going through a publisher, right? You found a publisher for your book. Yeah. Cool. Will you tell me about that experience? Like, did you go through querying letters and you know all that kind of stuff? <laughs> yeah. What's um. Yeah. The book. The book itself took about a year year and a half to write and then i started you know researching after i finished so what how does one become published and i found that there was like several routes to it and i said well why not go the traditional route so then i started looking up how do you find an agent and started researching that and writing query letters and getting tons of rejections left and right i have a whole spreadsheet of rejections. Um, you kept it in a spreadsheet? Yeah. <laughs> gotta stay organized because some of them don't respond for like six months. Oh, okay. So then you just forget about them and 
Yeah. It's very responsible of you. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, they were, I had a few personalized rejections, which was kind of neat. Most of them were just like, you know, standard. No thanks. Yeah. A few of them, a, a couple of them said, yeah, let's take a closer look. And then I sent them 50 pages or so of my revised, like, edited by multiple people. <laughs> and they're like, nah, we're good. <laughs> so, Never mind. <laughs> Never. Thanks. <laughs> so then I moved on to just directly sending my work to publishers without an agent. Because I thought, okay, this agent thing, I've been doing it for a year no one is really interested or seems to be interested long enough to stick with me. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I started getting rejection letters from publishers <laughs> for <laughs> another six months or so. And then finally, and then I did get a couple bites there, but they were from um, Vanity Publishers. So they're like, yeah, we'll publish your book <laughs> for $2,500. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Absolutely. We'll publish it worldwide. <laughs> we'll tell everybody about it. Just give us a whole bunch of money. <laughs> yeah. But it's still exciting. Like it's some. I remember I uh, had a, a vanity publisher call me, and I was so early in the process, I didn't even realize it. But I had just like prayed. I was like, just give me a sign that I'm at least on the right path. And the phone started ringing, and it said, "I Universe was calling me," and I was yeah. like, "The universe is literally calling me." That's awesome. <laughs> I was like, well, I guess that's a sign, even though it's, you know, yeah. they want me to pay, but still. It's a sign you know. you're on the right track. Sign them, yeah, I got exactly what I needed. <laughs> so you finally did get a publisher. It, okay, let's go, let's go back to the rejection, because I think this is so important for writers who are going through this process to realize. Be prepared for rejection after rejection. <laughs> it's not a well, question on you, but... It's kind of like dating in a sense, right? It's like somebody sees it's somebody sees what you're about, first impression, and they may may be interested, but then they get to know you and they realize you're an idiot, and they're like, I don't want to, I don't, not you. I'm talking about me, <laughs> <laughs> and then they move on. But it's like there's there's somebody out there for everybody, kind of deal, right? It's like you just got to keep trying. Yeah. What what was the best criticism or rejection letter you got that, that was like, oh, this is something I can use to help me grow from no one ever gave me advice on how to improve my writing they the best ones i guess were the the, the person the ones that actually wrote to me and said you know i'm really interested in this the topic is you know very interesting the dual world concept it's just not what I'm looking for right now. <laughs> not, I guess it wasn't very helpful. I don't know. Right. Well, I it guess showed genuine interest, but yeah. I guess that was that was heartening. I guess when I got past the first round, they showed interest in my ideas. I mean that. Yeah. That helped. No one, no one, none of the agents ever gave me any kind of advice in terms of do this better, do that better. Right. Did any of the publishers give you any, any kind of advice? Or was it a lot the same? It was more a lot of the same. Yeah. So how did you... You're with Chandra Press, is that right? I think it's Chandra. 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 I hope I'm pronouncing it right, yeah. <laughs> how did you come about them? Was it just like in terms of searching as many avenues as possible and putting out yeah, as much I was searching and searching they popped up I guess they started marketing their website because they're they're a startup they started at the beginning of um, 2018 oh wow okay and Eric Evans who's the founder of it he I guess he's working with a few other people and he they were act taking active submissions and I submitted basically a letter to them stating what my book was about and he was interested and said send me the manuscript and then um was it like a couple weeks later 
I get an email from him saying, hey, give us a call. Give me a call. I want to talk more. So <laughs> that was the most exciting moment of my life. <laughs> 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 and nerve-wracking. But, yeah. Um, he really liked the story. He said it was messy and there were a lot of technical issues with my writing and things that needed to be cleaned up, but the story was really compelling. And so he wanted to work with me and we had like a two hour long conversation. And after that, we both felt pretty good about it. And then we started the whole negotiation process with the contract. Yeah. That was hard because I didn't have an agent. That's what agents are for. Yeah. I had to get an attorney. My um, husband's brother, actually, he's an attorney. And I had to borrow him for <laughs> helping me negotiate this thing. Well, it's good that you were able to find somebody, though, because I know that can be terrifying. It's like yeah. the jargon <laughs> they use is just like you have no idea. If I had no idea or, what or, half that stuff was. Yeah. So, But they made, they made sure you're going to become a millionaire as soon as this book takes off, right? <laughs> about that <laughs> i think you were talking about the story they like the story with the technical aspects i think what a lot of things get missed with the big publishers is am I, am I looking at a good storyteller here because technically i think a lot a lot of people could use work right Tec grammatically gr grammar for me is like you got to be kidding me with this like make up your mind on what you, where you want a comma to go <laughs> and like because the rules seem to seem to like dictate and and morph on their own yeah. um with whoever, whoever you're talking to so technically there's a lot of things that as writers we can always improve on but it's like anything else it's a skill right but i think as a storyteller like are you able to produce or, or um, provide a good compelling story in such a way that you want to read it even if technically it's not the most sound thing in the world and i think with the bigger publishers simply because of the the volume that they deal with it's not it's harder to get them to actually be able to read it and be like okay i'm gonna take time and develop this writer so it's cool that you're able to go with uh, a smaller press and i mean if it's a good story it's a good story i, I know that even you know with all the independently published authors um out there like there's so many great writers and so many great storytellers yeah. that we wouldn't know about if it wasn't for that kind of thing. Um, so when is the book scheduled for? Well, we just started round two of revisions. And after that, it goes to the copy editor. After that, it comes back to us. After that, it's eight weeks of marketing. So <laughs> maybe June, maybe sometime in the summer. I'm That's exciting. Trying to move pretty quickly. Through yeah. It, so. With your other, and you're still doing the um, in-home uh, mental health care. No, I work out of a out of an office now in private. Okay. Practice. Yeah. Oh, very cool. So, you're are you able to get a lot of writing and editing and stuff done throughout the week, or is is it hard to find time for you? It's hard because, I mean life <laughs> I guess. yeah <laughs> but life. yeah i i find the time i make the time whenever right because in it's important sessions or one in the morning or when i get home or in the morning before i go to work just whenever i can fit it in because i have a yeah. deadline actually to meet um uh -oh. To finish reading through the second round and making comments and revisions i have uh, march 11th is my deadline and i'm uh seven chapters out of 40 in so i got <laughs> got to um you put the pedal to the metal <laughs> you got eight days or i'm um, seven days yeah i'm gonna do like five chapters a night from here on out lots of caffeine <laughs> you're gonna allow yourself mental breakdowns if necessary <laughs> I think if you if you I think if you give room for mental breakdowns then they're not as traumatic. Like just know that you're gonna freak out a couple different times, and then just keep going. That's also I mean that's incredible though. You have March 11th. I know you're gonna get it done for sure. I do. Um, you're also doing the cover art though, right? Yeah. Well, Eric said he's my editor too. Um, he said that we're aiming to use my cover art, but if if it's not 
I guess what the cover needs, then we'll use it in some other way, like inside the book or to market the book. So it's going to be used and I'm going to actually make a few other paintings. So there's kind of a selection to choose. That's from. cool to go if along. If I with. have the time. <laughs> yeah, if you have the time. Yeah. You can make a separate like um, picture picture version like they've done it with like they've done it with all these different children's books like a Harry Potter books and and the uh, Rick Rorty and um, Percy Jackson books that so they've made the um, what are they called where they they've got like all it's all artfully done now you know the stories you can make one of those those are really cool is that reminds me is this like a, a young adult or is it an adult version or is it like what's the categorized I guess it would be for this is what Eric thought he thought it would be good for all ages not all ages but young adult and up okay not not younger though <laughs> there's some content in there a few things it's pretty trippy yeah, yeah. so it's not like middle grade no is it is it you said it's a psychological thriller, so there's a lot of uh, ideas, I guess, that would be expressed that are not for younger minds. Yeah, there's, um, yeah, I would, say <laughs> okay. that. I would say so, but just more so like there's some drug references in the book and just things that are not <laughs> probably not suited for younger How children. Many <laughs> how many murders? How many murderers are there in this book? There are technically technically speaking there are some people killed in this book, but there are no there are no murders. There's nobody's no at fault. Nobody's found at fault for these <laughs> for these murders. No people just accidentally dying all over the place. No one no one well Several people get killed. How many? Probably like four or five. I'd have to count. But there's, it's not a, it's not a murder mystery. So that's not, I guess, the. Okay. That's not the point of it. Yeah. It is a fantasy. It's like a reality fantasy. Yes. Okay. I, we had a hard time trying to classify it. At first, we're like, is it magical realism? Because it seems like it's set in everyday life, but there's some magical elements to it. And they're like, no, it's more of a sci-fi with psychological thriller elements because it's, there's just a lot of, you know, dream states and hypnosis. and. So do you make it obvious that she's going into a dream? Or is this something that we have to come to learn? Or is it even is it is it even expressed that she's going into a dream? It's just more like this is happening in an alternate reality. Yeah. Okay. It's it's something you have to. You have to read it. I think it's pretty obvious. You have to infer it some of the time, but it's pretty. And the chapters are told in alternating, like from from the two rea two alternate realities. They alternate from like waking world, dream world, waking world, dream world. Mm. So it's like two books in one. Kind of oh like my, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna have yours published before mine. You're gonna you're gonna break ground on this. It's okay. But your story is totally different than mine. Yeah, it is. It's totally different storyline. It's like about a it's about a guy. So totally different. <laughs> yours is about a girl. <laughs> Not even close to the same. <laughs> I, I'm excited to read it though and see because. It, it, it's neat when because I've never seen the like two books in one because literally what I'm writing is the second portion of it or like the fantasy part is is going to become its own series. Oh, wow. And it's it's literally like I'm writing a whole story within like a fantasy story within a real you know <laughs> you know <what> I'm <laughs> and so it's gonna it's gonna manifest itself into a whole series of books is my plan. Um, but we're getting we're getting the reality more so in this book, he, like hedged with the fantasy. Gotcha. But it's how how long is your book? It's around eighty thousand words. Okay. A little bit more. 
Was it like 280 pages or something? Or? I have no clue how many pages it's actually going to be in digital format, but whatever 80,000 typically is 300 to something. Yeah, it's somewhere, it's somewhere close depends to there. The font. <laughs> yeah, it depends on the font and the formatting. So you're not going to have paperback or, or hardback copies? It's... So Chandra is a digital first publisher. So right now their only platform is Amazon. So they do paperback on Amazon. So it's going to be paperback okay. and digital. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Well, that's exciting. <sighs> I'm I'm excited. I'm really I'm excited to read the book. Um, so once you get, do you have plans for like? Is this part of a going to be part of like a sequel of books or is this a standalone? Do you have plans for other writing after this? Yeah, I actually started the second one, um, which is based on interesting you <laughs> said. What the <laughs> You're like, don't even go. Are you serious? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Would you get out of my head? <laughs> no, the... Um, That's crazy. So, this, so, you know, there's essentially two worlds in the first book. And then in the next book, the main character discovers a third world. That's sort of in between the first. I can't say too much about it, but it's it's an off you know offshoot of the first one. Um, different storyline, but some of the storyline continues because the book ends on a cliffhanger, which is going to drive people crazy probably. <laughs> Good. Good. Yeah. They'll wanna. They'll be clawing their eyes out for the next one. It's amazing. Like, I guess it's out there in the. It's out there somewhere, right? Like when I when I write, I try to get into a flow state and just kind of let let whatever comes out comes out. Do you kind of go about the same way? Just like let inspiration hit you. Yes, a hundred percent. I feel like when I sit down to write, and inspiration isn't hitting me, and I'm all in my head. It just feels really robotic and not creative. So I have to do something. I have to put music on. I have to just listen to something that's going to get me into the flow. And I have to just, sometimes I have to watch something or just do something else for a while. Because if I just sit down and write, that's that doesn't always work. Yeah. You know what I've found helps me um the music and stuff like that and I, I told you one of my other things is like literally changing my physiology of yeah. moving and doing stuff like that that literally that helps me a ton um depending on what state i need to be in but right like a lot of times when i can't get in the flow i just sit there and i write all the things that are going on like the immediate thoughts that are coming out of my head and a lot of times it's like me bitching about things excuse my language <laughs> okay but you know it's like i have to get that that voice out of my head because otherwise it's because it's wreaking havoc and as soon as i get it out on paper like i can see the flow the trickle of the the whiny crybaby matt that's like everything's so hard and i can't think straight and blah 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 and so eventually it's like i get into okay everything's fine just start writing you know what i mean you know what's really good for that for the crybaby voice in your head There's snickers <laughs> <laughs> hungry grab a snicker there's this book that i read i actually grabbed a bunch of books off my bookshelf because um inspiration inspiration yeah and also i know in previous interviews you talked about what you know you asked writers what inspires them or what got them into writing and so yeah. this is one of the books that helped me Ooh. with creative blocks the Artist's Way, um, A Spiritual Path oh. to Higher Creativity by Julie Cameron. I know Boy. that book. I and know that book. One. They have it talks some exercises about the first in thought, right? Like exercises in the morning to get your, yeah. Yeah. That was good stuff. I did that whole book, and I mean, I'm not doing my morning pages every day like I should, but when I was, man, it like opened up the flow, the creativity, the connection. Everything. It does. It yeah. just gets it gets all that stuff out. Like that's what my blog is basically. It's that morning pages. Um, it's important 
to to uh, declutter. So the the artist way is one of your big inspirations. You said you grabbed a couple of books. What else you got? Um. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's just been a lot of books along the way that have inspired me to write and inspired. Fifty Shades of Grey being one of them. Here's, here's a kids book that I think is amazing. A Wrinkle in Time. It's the series. All three of them. Okay. They're amazing. I, I haven't read those, but I need to. They're very interesting. Utterly magical. Would Utterly you say? magical, and not just for kids. I mean, there, it's it is some deep stuff in there. <laughs> so, so your book involves magic. I believe writing is its own form of magic. Did you find right? Did you find the magic while you were writing? Did you say like to yourself, "I can't believe that I'm writing this stuff"? Like it truly is. There's something extraordinary or special about it. I felt like, and this is gonna sound kind of corny, but at that time of my life when I was finding freedom from that job that I was in, and I was doing my own thing, and I. I was meditating a lot during that time. I just started to just clear out all the bad, all the bad juju uh, yeah. that was kind of with me for a while. And I started to feel just more like I was on the right path. And, you know, like you said that story about just give me a sign and then I universe called you. I felt yeah. like that was happening to me constantly, like all the time. And I just, I felt if this makes sense, I felt the magic just of living. And this book was something that came out of that. And I think it has elements of that within the book, this sort of like, yeah, you know, when you're on the right path, things fall into place. And I felt like because I was going through it, I was capturing it in my story. Yeah, I 100% understand that. That's and that's the cool thing about writing. If, if we can get in tune with where we're at right at that moment, that idea that was inspiring us, and we can like capture that, the essence of it and put it on paper, yeah. I think that's where the true like, aha, incredible story comes from. Do you still, do you still, so, all right, so did you stop doing all the things that were working for you? Did you stop meditating and, <laughs> and writing and all this other stuff? I could do better with all of those things. I feel like at that time in my life, I was less busy than I am now. Um, I just bought a house this year with my husband. We just got a pet parrot. A Congratulations. One, and he's kind of a sickly little thing, so we have to take care of him. <laughs> Her. Uh, we have been renovating our house because it was basically like when we bought it, I'm pretty sure Austin Powers lived in it because there was blue and gold shag carpets everywhere. Yeah, baby. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so life has been busy. And I started a private pra mental health practice with my friend. We left our old job, started this practice together, all while sim simultaneously buying a house and working on this book. Wow. So. Well, I mean, that's that's amazing. Though. Congratulations on all the, they're all great things. It's all like moving in a direction where people, I mean, that's what everybody wants, right? It's like this settling. It's, it's like settling as an adult. Yeah. Not, se not settling in a bad way. Hardcore <laughs> lately. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, your, your life is becoming more foundationalized, so to speak. I don't know if that's the right word. Sound good when you say it that way. You really, you really your said wording, but like my life is becoming so settled and foundationalized. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's good. But that's what people want. I thought that's like yeah. isn't that the American dream or something? <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. See, it's not it's not in everybody's dream, I guess. But yeah, it's yours apparently. I mean, you're doing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not. I I'm like traveling saying, and adventure too. I guess that that's there's that's yeah. There's got to be that sporadic stuff in there. Yeah, sporadic do you have plans? Do you have plans to travel? Um, well, the next plan to travel that I have is in May. I'm going to 
going to a conference, um, a mental health conference in Asheville. So with some colleagues, we're going to rent a cabin and nice. be there for a couple of days. So I guess that's my. Asheville's, Asheville's an amazing place. Yeah. That's really cool. I think, I think too, like getting out and getting, I'm not, I'm not trying to call into question your entire life, by the way. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> You're not. It's okay. I swear. I'm not. But the mental health profession thing really interests me too. How did, is that what you went to school for? Or are you, are you a, a pseudoscientist? You just makes you just make stuff up. That's what my grandma says. Like, what kind of? <laughs> You're just making crap up. Um, I actually majored. I went to school and got a double major in psychology and creative writing. And oh. at first, I thought I was going to do art therapy, which is the intersection of those two, sort yeah. of combining the creative field with the mental health field and I do that some in my practice now um and then but I knew I always wanted to write and that I really liked helping people so then I tried out a bunch of internships and I was convinced that I should get a master's in social work so I did and I mean I love the idea of combining my interests. Like my book has a lot of psychological elements in it. My work, I have done creative writing in therapy sessions. I like when things kind of combine. Come yeah. Well, it, it reminds us that everything is not separate, but everything is really the same. And I, I, I kind of, I'm starting to understand and put together why we have similar ideas in terms of our writing. I was literally, before I started writing, I was gonna, I was looking into going back to school to get my master's in social work. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> because I, it's crazy, right? Because I wanted to help people, yeah. and I've always been told I'm, I'm really good at, you know, communicating and, and helping people figure stuff out. But it's also personal to me where I've suffered with alcoholism and, and getting through depression and all that kind of stuff. And I've been in mental hospitals, and I've like not by choice necessarily, right. but because I've been put there. And uh, having to like figure all that out and come out on the other side of it has been a really profound thing for me. So I think that I might be able to help in some some form or way. But it just so happened that writing, you know, took over that. But how do you like when you're when you're working with people? Um, I know you said you like like combining the two, but like where have you found the most beneficial? Like, do you deal with a certain population, or is it just the general the general population? Um, I deal with a lot of different populations. I have specialties. Um, I, mm -hmm. I don't see too many couples. Um, I do a lot of play and art therapy. I can't say art therapy because I don't have a degree in that, but expressive arts therapy. Um, That's right. Trauma. I love trauma. I work with a lot of PTSD trauma victims of all sorts of, you know, from anywhere from accidents to sexual abuse to childhood trauma you know and that stuff is just i mean i love i love that work being able to work with those yeah. people is uh because i think there's a stigma too with the ptsd that it only can apply to people who are at war and i've had conversations with friends about that too and i'm like no it's it's post-traumatic stress disorder it's not post-war your stress brain can disorder. react the same way to a car accident than it can to a bomb being right killed. yeah it's yeah and it's it, it really is just about trauma and so it's uh, i'm hoping too that people can come to understand that it, you can have post-traumatic stress disorder without having to go to war like you don't you didn't have to be in war like you 100%. and don't don't limit yourself because it's like a lot of it is people will say well i can't have that because i wasn't there like no you can and it, it helps to have the correct diagnosis, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> because there's a lot of mis... I mean, there's a ton of misdiagnosis, you know what I mean? People yeah. wanting to diagnose themselves, obviously, doesn't help. Um, but it's understandable because doctors are scary. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> doctors with needles are scary, I should yes. say. You're able to combine the two passions that you have. That's That's a wonderful thing. You must really be loving your life. I do. It can be stressful at times, but I do love. 
<laughs> I love the look on people's faces when I say, you love your life, and they're just like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, it's good. I'm proud of you. Thank you. I'm proud of you. For, <laughs> you know, I'm excited to read your book when it comes out. Well, I've got two out, so you can start there. <laughs> That's right. You got, you know, the first one with the um, illustrated cover that you made. The you colored know. pencil illustration, yeah. And then tr and the second one is literally my journey through, like, alcoholism, and but, like, in a sci-fi oh, way. Wow. Yeah. And it's got a crazy ending. It's kind of psychological as well. Are they on Amazon? Or they are. Can I find them? Yeah. This isn't about me. <laughs> this is about you. Sorry, it's part of my job. I'm so used to talking to people and questioning them. It's it's weird being on the other, you know, other end of seat. it. Yeah, it is weird. I had, I went on a job interview last week, and it was the strangest thing. <laughs> like I'm in, I'm the interviewer. Yeah. How dare you? That's cool. So you you showed us your your books that inspired you. What's the legacy you want to leave with your writing or your work? What do you want people to say? Tanya Williams did this for me. Her work spoke to me. I had this idea that when people read my book, they would somehow, well, I want them to like the story, but somehow connect to the things I was connecting to when I wrote the story, these sort of bigger ideas of, you know, purpose and life path and connection and these things that I was feeling when I wrote it, I felt like I had a message I wanted to send, something I wanted to say, and I went about it through a science fiction kind of route, but I'm hoping that when people read it, they, they, they feel those things, they get those things, that maybe they become inspired to pursue their own creative paths or whatever, you know, I don't know. Um, okay. I'm hoping. And I'm hoping they just like the story, too. <laughs> okay. So let me ask you this, then. What is the meaning of life? <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> I think it's connection. I think it's just that interconnectedness that, you know, that we feel to each other, to... And this sounds really kind of new agey, um, but just connection. I guess that's the easiest way I can... Have you have you seen I Heart Huckabees? Uh-uh. <laughs> You'd love that movie. I Heart Huckabees, it's free on um, Amazon Prime. Or I think it is. It's on Amazon Prime. Why? Well, it's got uh, Dustin Hoffman and, and a couple other people in it, but it's really talking about connectedness, how we're all yeah. in this interwoven energy together. Yeah. yeah, it's it's like that, and it's really it's really good. It's funny too. Um, I agree with you. <laughs> Ditto. <laughs> I, I think that it is about being connected to one another. I, I don't think we were all placed here to just be soul entities and to never, you know, step out into the light with other people. I think and that's why one of the reasons I do this too is because I, I know that your story will help somebody else, um, that somebody else's story will help another person. But it's like, we can lift each other, you know, we can do it. We can do it. So, very cool. Sonia Williams, thank you so much. Did I say your first name right? I, Sonia? Sonia Williams, okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on the Uniweb interview show. It was truly a pleasure to talk with you about how you stole all of my ideas and how you're, <laughs> <laughs> that you're going to become a millionaire from them. So congratulations. <laughs> are different remember that it's all about the storyline that's what Stephen King said right it's all about the storyline and our storylines are different <laughs> that's right totally different absolutely totally agree I won't hold I won't hold a grudge when you're doing better than me I promise okay. that's totally fine no I'm just kidding I do hope you I, I wish you the best of success in all that you do I'm gonna um 
Um, you, you have your uh, your blog at author S, off sdwilliams.wordpress.com. I'm going to link that in the description of the video. Is there anything else you'd like me to um, – anybody else can connect with you or ask you? I Twitter, and um, I also have a Facebook page for my artwork, but that's, you know, separate from <laughs> – Hey, if people like you, they'll they'll stalk you however they want. <laughs> That's what I'm finding out. Okay, I'll link all that in the description of the video. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you would, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification for the bell. You know what? We love you. Love you. Love you. You know what?